So you should see the file manager at the very top. The icon might be different, like I said earlier, but the file manager name will be the same. So click on that. It's going to open up a separate window. And I will warn you, you have to be very, very careful when you move your mouse because you could potentially move a file, a folder into the wrong folder or what have you. So just keep that in mind. Be very, very careful while you're in here. So right now I'm in a website and most you're going to see all these different folders here. The key to remember is that some of you will see public underscore HTML and some of you might see HTTP docs. Now, if you're unsure about where the file should be located, you'll need to contact your web hosts because some web host companies will put it in a certain directory. But for the majority of you, it should say public underscore HTML. So this should be the magic folder that holds all the files that show up on your website. All of the rest of the folders here may pertain to your email system, to uh, files that are related to other than what people actually see. So we're going to click this here. And right off the bat, you see a bunch of WP dash, which basically tells you there's WordPress uh, site inside here. But if we scroll down here, I want to show you there are a number of things that we can do. So inside this folder, we can create a new folder. So if we want to do that, we can click folder and we can type the new folder. So create new folder. And what we could do in this folder is we could double click it just like you would on a PC or a Mac computer. We're creating folders. So same thing. But in this case, we can upload files. So we can click on upload and you can drag and drop files in here or you can simply click select file and upload files via there. So in this case, I can select an image, click open and that'll upload the image. So when I'm done, I click go back to the new folder and we can see that it is there. Now we could select a file and you can see that other options show up. So we select a file. We can also download it. So we could click download and it would download it to our computer. So if you had a zip file or a video file that you have, you want to download it to your computer, you can do that. You can also delete the file. We can also compress it. So let's say we have a good number of files that we want to compress into a zip file. We can select those files or select that folder and click compress. We can click zip compress and it'll compress it as you can see here. So we can click that, click download and there we go. We can also delete files. So you can select a file, click delete, skip trash and permanently delete files. Or if we unselect it, click confirm, we could do that. We can also rename. So you could rename the file here. We can also edit. Now it is an image file, so we can't necessarily edit the image file on here. We can only edit files like text files and things like that. So let's say, for example, we'll click file, new file, and we'll just name this file.txt. You can name it whatever you want it to, to be. So we'll do that and we'll click on edit. And now you can see that we're actually able to edit this particular file because it's a text file. You can also edit HTML file. So I could even do file.html. And if you're not familiar with what HTML files are, they're basically web based files. So we could click that. We could click HTML editor, click edit. And then you'll see the HTML editor. And then, of course, you can create text and increase the size and, and all that. So we'll exit out of that. 
And you can also set permissions. What permissions means is you're telling the system, okay, as a user, these are my abilities, these are my rights. I can edit the file. But the world cannot. But if you wanted the world to edit, world meaning everybody else to do it, then you could do that. I would not recommend that. You're going to run into the situation, especially when you install scripts, especially when you upload the scripts and it's going to ask you to change the permissions for certain files. So that's good to know right there. So that's pretty much it as far as file manager goes. And as long as you understand those basics, and understand that it operates very, very similarly to a Mac computer or a PC, then you're good to go.